I grew up in a family with a lot of people who made things. My grandmother sewed beautifully and she dressed beautifully. My mother started painting as an adult and she had a little easel set up in the dining room. And most evenings when dinner was done and you know homework was done, she would go into the dining room and start painting. And I remember one time she left to go to a PTA meeting and there were five children and I was the second oldest and the most obedient. She went to the PTA meeting and she said, do not touch my painting. Do not go in the room. Do not go near the brushes. Do not touch the oil. And there was something magnetic about this, these paints. And I get goosebumps thinking about it. I went into the room. I found a little canvas and I did a little landscape, a little uh, fruit study. I put it on the easel. I went to bed that night in total fear of my mother's rage because my mother had a temper. I woke up the next morning. My mother looked at me and she said, you are an artist. And I still have that painting. And they even did a little uh, plaque on it. Madeline W. Murphy, Jr., age 11, Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> but you know what? I didn't really own it because in my family, everybody could do things. I made doll clothes. My brothers drew. You know, they built things. And so I was surrounded by art. So I really didn't understand that it was anything special to be creative. And so it wasn't until later in high school that I became an art major. And even then, I just sort of took it for granted. And when I went to college, my father, who was a lawyer and who was very strict and who was very clear that he wanted his children to be in college and to, to work when they graduated and to find work that to go into college with a plan of what you want to be when you finish. And because I was always a good salesperson, I was in junior achievement, I had a newspaper route, I was always selling something. He said, you're a businesswoman and you need to go to business school. So I was 16 when I graduated because I was Actually, I was pretty smart and <laughs> I graduated from high school when I was 16. I didn't want to go to college because I couldn't figure out all this was going on in my head. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so my father said, well, since you can't decide what you want to do, I'll decide and you will go to the University of Maryland and you will major in business and public administration. So there I trotted off to the University of Maryland and I hated it hated it. The second year, I got a, got a little notice from the university that said, Madeline Murphy, you're on probation. If you don't get your act together, we're going to kick you out. Devastating, but happy because I hated it. My mother sits me down and she looks at me again. Madeline, you are an artist. We are going to the Maryland Institute College of Art and you're going to try to get into that school. So I trot over to the Maryland Institute of Art. They look at my academic record, which was, but they pick a few things out and they say, okay, you're admitted. And suddenly my life changed changed completely. I had found a home. I was an artist. I got A's and B's. Imagine me failing at the University of Maryland and feeling stupid and not smart and miserable and suddenly being in a place where I felt fabulous. And there began my career. My father, of course, said to me, well, I don't know how you're going to make a living as an artist. I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And my mother said, Bill, just leave that girl alone. She's gifted. Just leave her alone. And his brother, 
who was also a collector and who was very nurturing and supportive, oh, Bill, you don't understand. You're not creative. You're just a lawyer. We need artists in the world. We have to support artists. And that's when he gave me my first commission. And then he also gave me the opportunity to do an illustration for a magazine. And so began my career. And here I am, a hundred years later. <laughs> there was a period, I graduated from the, the Maryland Institute College of Art. I had met my husband-to-be. I married him four days after I graduated from college moved to Chicago, started my family, and painted. And I took classes and classes. And finally, my teacher said, you know, you've gone as far as you can go with me. I think you need to take some printmaking classes. And so I said, I'm going to see where I can go to do that. So I went to the Illinois Institute of Technology to see if I could take a class here or a class there. And they said, no, you have to register full time. I said, what? You mean graduate school? They said, yes. So once again, this little thing in my head, like, you're not smart, you're not smart, you can't do that academic stuff, you're blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I put in an application. I said, what the heck, I probably won't get in. So one day, go to the mailbox, open it up. You have been accepted to the Illinois Institute of Technology. I'm on the elevator reading this. A two-year-old here, a six-year-old here, and a friend standing there, a woman. And I look at it, and I said, oh my God, I can't go to graduate school. And she says, Madeline, what's wrong with you? I said, he's not in nursery school. He's starting kindergarten. I don't have a babysitter. I can't do it. It's going to be too hard. She said, you can do it. And you know what? I put my shoulders back, and I said, I'm doing it. Two years later, I got my master's degree with a two-year-old and a six-year-old and a husband who said, I don't know how you're going to do this, but I'll help you. So I became a printmaker. So I did that for a few years, but then I realized there was something else calling me. I didn't like being isolated. I'm a people person. I like to communicate, and I have a lot of energy, and being a studio artist wasn't satisfying. And I had this opportunity to be part of the Harold Washington administration. And he hired me to run the Office of Fine Arts for the city of Chicago, which gave me a wonderful opportunity to work with artists, to work with theater, to work with arts in organizations, a variety of things. And I did that wonderful job for seven and a half years and decided, that's enough. Now there's something else interesting. And one of the things that I was always concerned about was diversity, helping artists of color be involved in the art world and getting their work in collections, having it exhibited, being public artists, etc. And I said, you know, I've worked on behalf of this for so many years. Now I'm going to be the one that decides. I'm going to be the arbiter of taste. And my focus since 1992 has been building collections that are racially and culturally diverse. And that's what I've been doing since 1992. It's now 19, no, it's 2011. And I love what I'm doing. But then there was always this sort of pull. What about making things, Madeline? You need to make some things. You're not making things. You're living through other artists. So it was during that period of time that I started making jewelry. And so simultaneously, over the last, oh, 19 years, I've designed jewelry. So the jewelry is my personal passion. It's my way to be creative. The art advisory business is the way that I make a livelihood.